God. Glory to God. Let's praise the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. It's all yours, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You created everything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the Holy Spirit ministering, amen. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. For meeting all of our needs. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We receive right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, praise God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Tim, for opening. As always, we appreciate it. Suzanne and the worship team, thank you guys. Great work. Praise God. Presence of the Lord. Just a little uh, side note. I've got the, uh, we, we got the fiber optic uh, connected. Praise the Lord. And now we're just working out a few details. Uh, it's wireless from the uh, modem in my office to the, so we can uh, live uh, stream and so forth. And hopefully, we've got way, way more uh, mega stuff. Praise the Lord. Sorry if I'm using technical terms you may not understand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, anyway, we've got way more, so it should be a far better uh, end product for those that are watching it online and, and uh, so forth. So if it isn't, we'll just get more. Praise yeah, the Lord. We've got 40, 20 now, and we can go to 150. So, And that's already 20 times more than what we had before uh, when we had just the landline. So it should be a vast improvement. We just have to work out a few of the details and getting everything from point A to point B, and that'll be taken care of. Little or no time at all, praise the Lord. So thank the Lord for technology. People that do understand it. Praise God. I, I took a valuable piece of advice years ago from my dad who said, You don't need to know everything, you just need to know somebody that does. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank God for people that know more than I do. Thank yes. God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I don't know, uh, y'all probably know I've got a few, a little compulsive behavior sometimes, you know. And uh, a few phobias. You all got them too. You know you do. You just don't want to admit it. In fact, Tim was talking about people being afraid of flying. They're not afraid of flying. They're afraid of dying. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So I got a few phobias, and one of them is rose bushes. Now I've got my own. Oh, my my grandfather gave my mother, or my mother took a rose bush from my grandfather after he passed away, uh, from his property, and moved it down into hers. And then uh, I got to start off of that rose bush, uh, my grandfather's, and. We planted it at our house. And then Sally got another rose bush and planted that just across from it. So now I got this thing about rose bushes. I'm a little paranoid of them because whenever I'm mowing, they find me. And they just like latch onto you, right? So the other day she asked me to dig it up. Actually, she had pruned it way back and she wanted me to dig it up and get rid of this one, not my grandfather's, but the other one because it was just kind of nasty and wasn't blooming a whole lot, but just it's just dangerous, praise the Lord. So she had me dig up this rose bush. Now, my fear of roses is a thorny issue. I'm not sure what it stems from, but it looks like I'm stuck with it. Now, this part of that story was actually true. I did dig it up. I did have to dig it up. But I had a weird, a really weird experience this week. A man assaulted me with milk, cream, and butter. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're on a roll. We're glad to take up another offering. Yeah. This is really weird too. I read it just the other day. 
You hear about the guy whose uh, whole left side was cut off. He's all right now. He's all right. <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> okay. That's about all anybody can handle. <laughs> One sitting. Praise the Lord. God is good, isn't he? Yes. Praise God. All right. Let's... Uh, do you know why some couples uh, don't go to the gym? Some relationships don't work out. Yeah. <laughs> Stop me. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Okay. I really mean it this time. <laughs> Ephesians 1. All week, don't forget to tip your waitress. Thank you. Thank you. Ephesians 1, verses 4 and 5. I just got about four scriptures here real quick just to kind of uh, get us in the context of where I want to go. This really isn't the opening scriptures, but it is just some to kind of see where I'm headed. So <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So he's chosen us in Christ before there was even a world. Mm -hmm. When God was beginning to form the world, we were already in Christ. Christ was in God says he came out. Now, the, my point is this. We talked last Sunday about heaven on earth yeah. and us being that manifestation. If we get this, if we can really tune into the revelation that God's trying to give us, nothing is impossible for us. That's, exactly right. That's when we lay hands on the sick and they recover. That's when we speak, cast out demons. That's when we take authority. We're not going to do it based on our behavior. We have to do it based on a work that's already finished. Right. That this is already done and we are participants in it now. Yes. Nothing I mean, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? Now, that's fine, but it just has become cliche, basically, in the church. We, we mimic that. We repeat it, but we don't do it. Because right. we're still trying to be better. Tr still trying to get more power, more strength, or what have you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. True of all of us. I mean, it's our mental kind of block against this stuff. But God has told us that we'll do greater works than He done. And we don't have to do anything more to get it other than to just do it. Yes. All right? So, Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. We don't exist. This old nature doesn't even exist as far as God's concerned. Right. We are, all he sees is Christ. We are hidden in Christ. That's our reality. All right? John chapter 17, verses 23 and 24. I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. All right, then this scripture, Hebrews 7, verses 9 and 10. What I'm saying is there's no separation between us right. and God. And as I may say, so say, Levi also, who received tithes, prayed, paid tithes in Abraham. Don't get nervous. I'm not preaching on tithes. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the physical representation of everything that God's telling us spiritually. So this is all about Melchizedek. And remember, uh, Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. They had the wine and the, and the bread and... And he gave him tithes of all the stuff that they had taken from the kings when he defeated them, right? So he says, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. Because he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. That was a thousand years earlier. But they're saying, Levi was in Abraham then. 
Just as we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Just as myself and my children and their children and their children's children were in my grandparents. Yes. My great, 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 yes. great, all the way back to Adam. Right. Right? Yes. That's why we're all, at some point, we come from the same source. Yes. Right. Yes. And that source was God. Yes. Because Adam would have never existed had God not breathed the breath of life into him in the, in the first place, right? right? Yes. So we lost that. We were separated from God because of the fall, because of disobedience of Adam. But Jesus puts us back in that original position, which is in Christ. Thank you. All right. So last week I said, when I read Genesis, especially in the creation aspect of it, I'm thinking to myself, well, now, is, is Adam in a garden? Or is the garden in Adam? Or is it both? Right? So look at Mark. In Mark chapter 4. We don't have to turn there, Sheila. Mark 4.14 just simply says, The sower soweth the word. So maybe it's you know it's just me, but I think that God gives us seed. He gives us the word. And if we plant it, and if we water it, and we cultivate it, we will reap not only the, the manifestation of it, but the revelation the truth that's hidden for us. Yes. And that's true about whether it's healing, whether it's prosperity, whether it's, whether it's our identity. Because it's in our identity that everything flows from. Amen? So in, <coughs> excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 14. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receive not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. All right, Colossians 1. Verse 16 through 22. Colossians 1, 16 through 22. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, Unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Jesus. In the sight of God. Yes. So the cross is the cure for the sin and death that plagued humanity. Right. It separated us from God. And Jesus' incarnation makes him the Son of Man and the Son of God at the same time. Yes. He became what I am so that I could become what he is. <coughs> the Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men could become sons of God. Amen. Jesus identified with the first Adam in his fallen state. He identified with that first man, our progenitor, the, the, the one we came out of. Amen. Jesus identified with him as being a sinner. Even though Jesus never sinned, he identified with that sin. Amen. He took it. In other words. Amen. He took all of that and nailed it to the cross in order to remove that man of sin. Yes. That originator. Amen. And the death of Jesus was the death of all of mankind. He was the last Adam. And through his cross, Jesus restored us. Yes. Back to what we were before the foundation of the world. Yes. Amen. Adam was born in a garden. 
And because of his disobedience, it became a graveyard. Jesus took a graveyard and through his obedience, he turned it into a garden. Praise the Lord. John 20, verse 11 through 15. John 20, 11 through 15. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and see if two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. They say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. That was no accident. That was no coincidence. Jesus is the keeper of the garden. The last Adam. Amen. He is the keeper of the garden of God. Amen. And the angel standing at the tomb is pointing inside to the tree of life. Praise the Lord. Look at Genesis 2, verses 21 to 23. Remember, everything God does, he, the way He teaches is metaphors. It's metaphorical. It's, it's uh, types. Amen? It's, it's like parables all the time. He's always connecting. And none of this stuff is there just by accident or just for the sake of making good prose. It's there because He's trying to tell us something. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and stood thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So in the beginning, God opens up Adam's side and a woman was brought out of him. A help me, the scripture says, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. When Jesus died on the cross, how many of you know his side was open? With a spirit, right? Yes. And what happened? The same thing that happens in any birth, blood and water flowed out. Which was the birth of the church. Amen? Which was in Christ. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. The bride. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Wow. Luke 23, verse 39. See, we were there all along. Yes. But it took a death for us to be revealed. Yes. One of the male factors which were hanged, railed on him. This is Jesus hanging on the cross, and the two thieves on either one on either side, right? And one of them, which was hanged, railed on him, saying, "If you are the Christ, if thou be Christ, save yourself and us." That's a picture of Satan, right? Because look at Matthew four, verse three. When the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Right? Verse 6. Saith then, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it's written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time they dash their foot against the stone. Praise the Lord. That's a picture of Satan. Yeah, yeah. This if, if thou be, it carries the same insinuation as when the serpent asked Eve, Hath God said? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Right? He questions divine authority. Yes. He's a rebel. He's, that's what he does. Amen? Yes. And identity. Yes. He's questioning whether he is Jesus, and if he is, what's your authority? You have authority, right? Yes. So as children of God, how many of you know we've got authority? Yes. We are the offspring of God. Yes. We have an inheritance. Jesus is the firstborn. He, he showed us what that is. Amen. Now it's a question of whether or not we're going to walk in that same identity. Yes. This is what the devil does to all of us. He challenges yep. our authority by challenging our identity. Yes. Praise the Lord. If he can get you to believe that you're just Tammy, yep. what power do you got? Only the human power that anybody would have. Yep. Right? It's when you know that you are 
in Christ and that Christ is in you and that that's how God sees you. That's when you can exercise authority. That's when authority, things will obey you because of who you are, because of your identity. Praise the Lord. All right, Luke chapter 23, verses 40 uh, through 42. Amen? The second thief on the cross that day shows what Jesus was doing on the cross with Adam. Right? The other one says, he rebuked him saying, he's rebuking the first one that said, if thou be the Christ, right? The second one rebukes him and says, Don't, dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. All right? So here's what he's telling us. We got what we deserve. We didn't, we didn't uh, uh, get off the hook here for our, our sin or for our being in Adam initially, right? right. We deserve what we, we got what we deserved 2,000 years ago. Right. Amen? We didn't get off the hook. We were crucified with Christ. Yes. Amen. The second thief, he asked Jesus, remember me. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, don't forget me when you get to the other side. In this context, the thief was praying that Jesus would remember him. Yes. Put him back where he belonged. Put him back to the condition that he was in before the fall. Yes. Remember me. Remember me back. Yes. Right? Amen. Yes. So put me back together again when you come into your kingdom. Yes. Wow, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Luke 23, verse 30, uh, 43. Luke 23, verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Amen. So the cross is the gate to paradise. It's the way back to the garden of God. See, the, the tragic failure of Adam in the Genesis garden ends in total triumph in the garden called Gethsemane yes. by the obedience yes. of one man. Uh -huh. yes. Genesis 3.24. So he drove out the man he placed at the east of the garden of Eden, cherubims, notice that, yeah. it's plural, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Mm. Okay, so look at John now again. Let's go back to John 20 and verse 11 and 12. Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping, and she, as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and see two angels in white, sitting the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Mm -hmm. So here's maybe what Mary was seeing was two angels that were placed at the east of the Garden of Eden. And what they were pointing to was the blood of Jesus and his sacrificial death. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at Psalms 91. Verses 1 through 4. Praise God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. If we were crucified with Christ, we were also resurrected with Christ. That's why Paul says, and I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And I now live by the life or by the faith of Jesus Christ. So maybe what Mary was seeing was these two angels pointing Back to the garden. The way back. Right? By the blood of Jesus. 
by the finished work of Christ. What's under the wings of the angels is a blood-sprinkled mercy seat. Yes, it is. Just like on the Ark of the Covenant, you have the angels like this. Amen. That's the picture that you're seeing that Mary sees in the tomb. Amen. Back to Genesis 3.24 again, please. So he drove out the man and placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So they weren't there to keep man out. They were there to keep the way of the tree of life. Amen. Why? Because they, instead of choosing the tree of life, they chose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. So they were keeping the way, amen, of the tree of life. So there would be no more confusion. So that man would not go back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. Which is what religion has done for 2,000 years now. Right. On the cross, Jesus reconciled us. Yes. We have access again to the garden. Yes. Amen. Where God supplies all of our needs. Where God meets all of our needs. Where we just rest. Amen. In the finished work. Praise the Lord. So the, we know the way back. John 14 verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Where was the Father when we got separated in the garden? He was looking for Adam. He was walking in the cool of the day. Amen. So, praise the Lord. We, 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 this way, amen, it is the way. And He said, this is the way. Walk you in it. And we can hear His voice in the cool of the day. Rest in Him. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way to the Father is by Him. Right. Amen. The tree of life. Right. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We've entered into a brand new creation. Yes. We've entered into Christ. Praise the Lord. Our original position. Amen. Before the foundation. Mm -hmm. Back to the garden. Yes. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. The Amplified Translation and others translate that. We are co-workers with God. We are God's garden. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. John 20, verse 12 through 15. We are co-workers. We are God's garden. See two angels white sitting, uh, in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. They say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, says to him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. She thought he was the gardener. He's the keeper of the garden. Yes. Whom God says we are. Yes. The garden that Adam lost. Yes. He lost his connection with God. Yes. Amen. Back in a finished work. Yes. It happened. Yep. Right? Genesis 1, verse 27 to 31. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. God blessed them, God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God said, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you so shall it be, or you 
to you it shall be for me. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. How do you know God supplied everything? He just said, it's all yours now. All you got to do is take it, right? Look at Genesis now, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. So the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all of his work which God created and made. So Adam was placed in a finished work and instructed to guard and to keep it. He was given dominion. He was given authority. Authority to replenish and fill the earth. Amen? Yeah. Replenish and fill the earth with what was in the garden. Yes. Right? He was blessed to be a blessing. Yes. He was given rest in God's finished work. He didn't have to work. No. He just had to speak. Yeah. Yes. He just had to receive. Yes. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. The word work doesn't even come up until he leaves. And then it's by the sweat of his brow that he's going to have to produce, right? But before that, there wasn't any sweating going on. Let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us of the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath that they shall enter into my rest, although the works was finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. So you can see, whether it's what I was talking about last Sunday or this Sunday, it didn't start in the New Testament. It, It started when God created In fact, it started before God created, when we were in Christ, when we were in God. It was in the mind of God way before there was anything, before we ever existed. We did exist in Him. Yes. Praise the Lord. And everything He's trying, He's showing us in the garden, in the children of Israel, when they wandered in the wilderness instead of entering into the promised land, the land of rest. Amen. It's all talking about the same thing. It's talking about Jesus. It's talking about He is the promised land. He is the garden. He is the one that we're trying to get back to from where we fell, from where we were. Amen. As as the human race I'm speaking of. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As He said, I have sworn in my wrath that they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For He spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this life. And God did rest the seventh day from all of His works. Now, here's the deal. At any point, this is speaking specifically of the wilderness, but it's talking, It's a bigger metaphorical phrase, but it's speaking here specifically of those people in the wilderness. If those children of Israel would have mixed the Word of God with faith, <coughs> any time sure. they could have entered in. Yes. Yeah. That's the only thing that was stopping them. Yeah. Their belief, their unbelief was the only thing stopping them. The same thing that stopped Adam was unbelief. <clears throat> if he didn't believe what God said, he wouldn't have listened to the devil. Right. Did he really say that? Right. right? Just like Jesus. If thou art, you know, if thou be. Yep. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 11, yep. verses 27 to 30. Mm-hmm. See, I, I was thinking when uh, Jody was talking about their cousin, mm-hmm. is that right? Nephew. Nephew. Uh, There's a place in Scripture where it says, you know, take no thought. What shall I wear? What shall I eat? What's going to come tomorrow? Thoughts come. You can't stop the thoughts. But you don't have to take them. Because it's only when you take them that you will speak from that. We only say what we think, right? So if we take a thought, it becomes our thought, and then we start talking negative, and we end up getting the results of that. You can't stop the, the thought of fear, right. but you don't have to take the thought. Exactly. 
right? You can replace that thought with the Word of God. That's why confessing the Word is so powerful. Because we all get negative thoughts. We all get thoughts. Well, I'm getting older. Oh, they're, they're. you know, so many people get this. They only live so long. Or, or you know, bad stuff's happening all around me. If I leave the house, I'm, but something bad's going to happen. You know, I'll get hit by a truck. Or somebody will rob me. Or somebody will assault me with butter or cream. And <laughs> How dare he? But... Right? I mean, that's, that's the deal. Just don't take the thought. Replace it. So, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. Amen? Is that Matthew 11? 11, what? what? 27 through 30. 27, okay. There's 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, Okay. Now, we're back in the context, right? All things are delivered unto me of my Father. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father except the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Praise the Lord. We have a problem with that. Yeah. Because, again, if we take this and point it back to the children of Israel, it is, instead, what Israel did, instead of coming to Him and trusting Him and entering into the, the rest, right? They wandered around eating this heaven-sent substance, mm -hmm. praise the Lord, and never understanding what it was they were eating. In fact, they called it manna, and manna literally means whatness. Like, what the is this? They said, literally, what is it? It was, it was a heaven-sent substance, and they're going, I don't know, what is this thing? Amen? Not only did they not know what they were eating, they didn't like what they were eating. They wanted meat. And they murmured against the miracle. Now here's what gets me. I, I wonder sometimes if we live in a time when churches want a parade of the flesh. Yeah. Entertainment based, yeah. you know, religious system. Mm -hmm. Instead of a steady diet mm -hmm. of the true bread of life. Mm -hmm. That will change you. Yes. You can be entertained. But we don't need entertainment. We've got plenty of entertainment. There's plenty of ways to get entertained. What we need is something life-changing. What we need is something that will give us strength, spiritual sustenance, something that will change us, something that will bring us, amen, to a place of rest. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. Hebrews 4, 3 through 6. So for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath. If they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in, because of unbelief. Somebody's got to enter in. Somebody's going to enter in. And it wasn't them. Okay? So if we haven't entered the promised rest, it's because until we have a clear understanding of how the work got finished, we'll keep trying to work over and over and over to finish it. Which is what they did. Amen? I'm talking about the work of getting rid of who we were in Adam and bringing forth a new creation. That's, that's For us, that's our responsibility. And the only way it happens is by faith. Faith in what? Faith in what he accomplished. Faith in the finished work. Faith in the fact that Adam doesn't even exist anymore as far as we're concerned. We have a whole new lineage, a whole new ancestry. And it goes all the way back to God Almighty. Yes. He is our Abba. He is our Father. He is, amen, everything. Yes. Yes. We, have, we don't have any other DNA other than God's. Right. 
Yes. Once we got born again. Right. Praise the Lord. Look at Deuteronomy 5, verses 14 and 15. See, we don't have to try to be spiritual. We just are. We can't help it. Exactly. We have to try to not be spiritual, right. to be quite honest with you. Right. Sheila was talking about, look, bad stuff happens. We live in a fallen world. But what could have been a horrible tragedy with their granddaughter... It was what? A little embarrassing at worst. Yeah. Right? right. Could happen to anybody. Right. But God foreseeing yes. what that possibility would be God. moves on a neighbor who may not even be a believer. It doesn't matter. God can, oh, God. God can speak to anybody and cause them to do whatever He needs to have done. Yes. Yes. Go look out your window. Yeah. Why? I'm in the basement. I mean, hey, if I'm down in the basement and Sally said, come up here and look out the window, I usually say, in a little bit, I'm in the middle of something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She didn't wait. She went and looked out the window and stopped what could have been a tragedy. Right. But it wasn't her, it was God. Yes. Amen? Amen? Wow. That's... It happens in all of our lives. Yes. Things happen all the time. Yes. Yes. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor uh, thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Now again, we are spiritual. I'm out here. In fact, I came, I came down here uh, nearly every day this week for that Wi-Fi stuff. And, and uh, then I was mowing on Friday. Or, yeah, Friday. And I come in and this door, this door on the dormer there doesn't open from the outside. You've got to go in and upstairs and unlatches, right? And that's where the mower is. So I come in, I go through, and I open the door to the foyer, and I turn in, and it's pitch black in there because there's no lights in the, that dormer. Mm. And I turn the dormer, and there's two big eyes staring back at me. <laughs> so I can't see what it is. I just know it's a good-sized animal, right? And it ain't making any noise, which is not a good sign. So I know it's not a chihuahua, right? Because it would have been yipping. So I open the door up and turn on the lights in there so I can see and it looks like it could be a cat, but you know cats look like, like coons. Yeah. yeah. And there's a big difference. Yeah. If we pet a cat and a coon, I promise you. <laughs> so I went and got a broom so I could go up and pop the latch on the thing, forgetting that the garbage can is right in front of the door, so I can't get the door open anyway because the garbage can is there locking it. And the cat leaps out as I pop this thing up. He leaps out of there and it's this big. I mean, it's big. I've got a big cat at home, Bill. Bill the cat. And he is big. So I tell you, I mean, this thing, weighs, he weighs about 30 pounds. He's huge. But this thing was that big at least, but it was a long-haired cat. So it made it look even bigger. And he leaps out of there. Now, he's freaked out, but believe me, so was I freaked out. And so I pushed on the door and about that time he goes right down between my legs. He's hiding over there under the shovels and stuff in the corner. He can't get into the church because I had that door locked, but neither could I get in the church. So I go up and push the door enough to get the garbage can out of the way, and then I had to go down and flush him out of the shovels and rakes down there in the corner, not knowing whether this thing is rabid or yeah. what it might be. I knew it wasn't my cat. I knew it wasn't one from home because he had claws. This one has claws. Mine doesn't have claws, just on the back feet. But I finally flushed him out and out the door he went. Well, I get upstairs, and I'm, I'm not thinking about anything spiritual. Okay? I mean, don't judge me. I'm just thinking I just survived a wild beast, you know. I step out the door, and the woman from over here says, Nathan, Nathan. So I come over, and I said, yeah, what's up? And she tells me a story about a crazy old woman that's stealing garbage and stuff, and I don't know what all that was about, but... But she said, and I'm just laughing and talking to her and saying, ah, that's no big deal. They're going through the garbage as long as they put it back in the can so I don't have to pick it up. And I'm just kind of laughing and joking about it. And she says, you know, Nathan, I've come to the end of myself. 
how would you feel about visit or how do you feel about visitors? And I said, well, everybody's welcome, obviously. It's a, it's a church, you know. Yeah. And she said, well, I've really come to the end of myself. I just don't know how much more I can take. Yeah. And uh, I said, well, you know you're welcome. You can come to the church anytime you want to. Anybody can. The door's open for anybody that will. I said, that's what churches are for, for people that are hurting, for people. That's how everybody ultimately ends up coming. I said, if you've come to the end of yourself, you're in the perfect spot. You're right where Jesus can do something for you. And I said, that's the way I was. I, you know, I told her a little bit about my past. I didn't go into a lot of details. Just said, hey, you know, I think she felt like, you know, I'm a bad person or I've done something bad at some point. And uh, so I just said, look, you know, God loves you. And what you're feeling is him dealing with you. He wants you to come to him because he's the answer. My point is just simply this. It's like Sheila going into this house. She doesn't know any problems. The woman's moving out. Why? My husband's dying. That's a divine connection. She didn't do it. She was just doing what she does, right? I was just doing what I do. And a little extra. Cat work. It's hard. But God makes the connections. The deal with your nephew. It's not an accident. He's your nephew. Because God's got to be able to get to him. Right. And he needs somebody that's already God's to do that. Right. We don't have to try to be spiritual. No. The opportunities for that spiritual work to take an imp- or make an impact are there every day for us. Mm-hmm. Just because of who we are. Right? right? Yeah. I mean, religion will try to get you to be behave as though you're yeah. something. It's not the behaving. I mean... It's just who you are. Yeah. And people identify with that. They'll identify with it because it's God's way of connecting with them again. Mm-hmm. Getting himself back in them and them back in the him yes. where they belong. Yes. Right? Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. So, all this about the Sabbath, right? And if you notice, when you look in the New Testament, almost every miracle that Jesus did was done on the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. And that really irritated the religious leaders because of scriptures like this. They didn't understand. Now look at Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. They had an earthly perspective of rest. And God was trying to give them a heavenly perspective. A garden where everything is met. Where all of your needs will be met. Where God will take care of you. Where you'll just walk in the presence of God. And be a blessing to whoever you come into contact with. Yes. Right? 13 what? Uh, uh, Excuse me, 13. 10 through 17. And we know this story. Jesus was, again, all this, God's always connecting, right? We have a tendency to look at things disconnected, disjointed. Something here, something there, something there. And it doesn't, it's all, it's all part and parcel of the same thing. So he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bound together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue is irritated because he just messed with Deuteronomy 5, right? Yeah, he did. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation in his mind, Because he's looking at things from an earthly perspective instead of the spiritual. He's thinking of this from an Adamic way of thinking rather than a God way of thinking. He said, the synagogue answered with it because that Jesus had healed on the seventh day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work and then therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. He said, you got six days you could have come and got healed. Don't come in here and mess up my Sunday or my Sabbath, right? The Lord then answered him and said, thou hypocrite. Does not each of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? He said, don't. You're working. If you've got cattle, you're going to feed them and water them on Sabbath just like you would any other day. 
Because it's a monetary investment you got here and you don't want to lose it, right? He said, you're a hypocrite. You're working yeah. just to feed an animal. Right. And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. So throughout the scriptures, now we already looked at this, a woman is oftentimes symbolic of the church. And this event is, is no exception. Because as I said, a problem with a lot of the church is a lack of understanding the rest that our husband provides. Yeah. Amen? These religious leaders were telling Jesus that this woman should not be healed on the Sabbath. Crazy, right? I mean, what better day to be set free from bondage than on the day when the work was finished? What they didn't understand was that the Sabbath was there to heal their sicknesses. The Sabbath was there to cleanse them. The rest. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. The entering into the rest. That's for your healing. It's for your cleansing. It's, it's, it's what will make you whole. Yes. Yes. They will cleanse them from sin. From all unrighteousness. Uh, 13.11. If you can go back to verse 11. This woman is bowed down. She can't even stand up straight, right? Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise and no wise lift up herself. The woman was bent over toward the ground, right? Like this. Making her vision literally earthbound. So all she could see was the earth was the natural ground, was the thing that was below her. Now here's what the, the Lord is saying. We need to be less focused on monitoring the earth and the devil and Adam's domain and instead focus on the Sabbath. Focus on the rest in Jesus. Focus on the garden. Praise the Lord. The heavenly. Yes. Verse 16. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound below these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? She was Abraham's seed. She was from the lineage of Abraham. Just like you, by the way. Amen. If you're in Christ, you're Abraham's seed. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's our inheritance to be free. To be whole. To be healed. To be delivered. To prosper. It's our inheritance. It belongs to us. Yes. Amen. Jesus didn't read her a list of wrongs and sins. In other words, He didn't point her to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He pointed her to the tree of life. He spoke the word to her and she was loosed and made whole. God life. Amen. Ephesians 1.3. This is the rest. Wherewith the weary find rest. Yeah. Quit, you can quit working. You can quit trying. You can quit putting all that effort into it. Yeah. You can relax. Yes. And yes. trust God. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Look at that. Yeah. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Yeah. He has blessed us. It is done. It is finished. Yes. Yes. Colossians 3, verse 3. Or you are dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. That's a blessing. He has placed us in the heavenly Christ. 
Yes. We're not in Adam anymore. He doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. We are in Christ. Yes. We are hid. Our lives are hid in Christ. So all that God sees is Christ. Yes. He sees you in Christ. The way He saw you before the foundation of the world. Yes. When you didn't do anything. Right. Amen? Amen. He sees you in the garden. Yes. Back where the work was finished. Mm -hmm. Where God did it all and he just rested. He said, you're blessed. Now just be a blessing and expand this thing. Yes. And I think that's what Jesus was trying to do. He was trying to get this doubled over woman to see. He loosed her so she could see her position in the new creation. Back to the garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus' death was the death of everybody. He's standing in the heavenlies. Mm -hmm. And he makes possible the lifting of our heads mm -hmm. so that we can look at ourselves from a heavenly perspective yes. and see ourselves as God sees us yes. in Christ. Yes. Psalms 24, verses 7 through 10. Psalms 24, 7 through 10. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Praise the Lord. Lift up your heads. You are a gate to the garden. You're a pathway for somebody to get to the tree of life. To keep the way of the tree of life. You are in Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. Our focus is should be the other side of the gate. Yeah. The other side of the door. Yeah. To the garden. I am the door. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody that comes to me, I'll open the, the door to what? The door to the garden. The door yes. back to God. Yes. The door back yes. to being one. The door back to who we were before the fall. Colossians 3 and 1. And if ye be Christ, he says, right? If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. That word if is a lousy translation. If you look it up, the, actually, uh, it's because, of the, if you look at the, the uh, literal uh, Greek translation, it's saying because your resurrection is already accomplished. Because you have yes. been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Yes. Amen. I'm not, see, here's the point. I'm not striving to get somewhere. No. I'm not trying to be something. I'm already something. Yes. I've already arrived. Yes. It's out of this being that I act. Yes. If I'm acting to be something or acting to get somewhere, yes. I'm not, I haven't figured it out yet. No. Nope. I am. We are. And I are. Yes. And because I am, I just be. Yes. I mean, I'm just doing. I don't have to try. I just am. Yes. It's out of this being that I live my life, that I act. Yes. And I don't have to be weird about it. I'm just me. Just being me. Right, right. Christ has placed us. Yep. Amen. Yep. He's put us someplace. Yes. There's been a placement of God that sets us in a place yes. where we can walk in the newness of life, yes. not in the oldness of the letter. Yes. Ephesians 2. Last scripture here. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you have he quickened who were dead 
in trespasses and sins. He made you alive, right? Yes. Verse 5 and 6. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Now how many of you know, it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yes. And then it's me being in Christ, right? If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Yeah. Old things are passed away. Yeah. If you're Abraham's seed, you're in Christ, you're Abraham's seed, right? Yeah. And if Christ is in you, it's the hope of glory. So we're in Christ, and Christ is in us. So it's not, are we in Christ, or is Christ in us? It's both. Are we in a garden, or is the garden in us? Both. Praise the Lord. Why? Because in Him all the fullness dwells. And He's in us. And we're in Him. Yes. This is all there is. Yes. There ain't no more. No. Yeah. Praise yes. the Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. We keep trying to add something, and there's nothing to add. Exactly. We have arrived. Yes. Amen. There's not something else. Mm -hmm. This is it. Yeah. And then one day we just walk out of this flesh. Nothing changes. We don't die. We're going to live forever. Yes. We are spirit beings. Yes. We just got a body. Yes. Right? It's just a vehicle. Right. If we don't let the vehicle right. dictate yeah. our identity. Right. Because yes. the enemy can mess with the vehicle. Yes, he but he can't mess with me. Mm. As long as I know who I am, exactly. I have authority. Yes. Amen? Amen. This is what he's trying to get us to understand. I'm a garden. Yes. I'm a garden. And out of this garden, out of this kingdom, flows everything. Yes. Everything I had need of, both spiritually and physically. Yes. In God and in this life. Right. He's given me all things that pertain right. to life and godliness. Yes. But if I let this become my identity, the enemy has access. Sure. He can get to my flesh. Mm -hmm. Right? He can make me sick. But I can be healed. Yes. If I'm in the garden. Yes. Right? Yes. But if I let the garden become a cemetery, right. the devil can yeah. mess with me. Yeah. And that's what we've done in church. We've, we've just made it about us doing more. Sure. Work. Work and get better and be better. I'm not saying we shouldn't be good people. I'm just saying... If you're working to get there, mm -hmm. you're already lost. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You're already separated. It's We're not going to heal ourselves. He has already healed us. Exactly. Yes. We have to recognize where we are and who we are for that to manifest. Yes. He's already prospered us. He became poor that we would become rich. Yes. He became Adam so that I could be him. Yes. Right? Yes. Adam's a loser. He's a failure. Yes. But I'm a winner. Yes. I don't know any defeat. I, 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 I cannot be defeated. Right. I'm more than a conqueror. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Every day is the Sabbath. I'm resting. Yep. I don't have to work. Mm -hmm. I just got to learn to rest mm -hmm. in what He's done. Yep. Praise the Lord. Sounds simple. But you'd be surprised. I'd say 80 to 90 percent of our problems is us trying to fix ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it's frustrating. And it's failure after failure after failure. But when you give it to Jesus, cast all your care upon Him, yes. you rest. Yeah. And He does the work. Yes. It's a discipline. You have to discipline yourself to get the hell out of the way. Right. Yes. And I mean that literally. Yes. To get it out of the way, yes. you've got to rest in Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
Give the Lord a hand. Clap. Yes. Amen, amen. See, we're on a vacation. Yeah. It should last a lifetime. Amen. And then we get the really big vacation. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. We, praise the Lord. It's a, you know, it's the Sunday night stay over. You still have to leave on Sunday. Yeah. You know, get back to the job. Yeah. You get a perk. Yeah. You don't have to go back. Yes. Just stay. Yeah. Just go ahead and stay. Right? Yes. That's it. We've got to just stay for eternity with God. Amen. Amen. Now think, think about this. We're, we think of it in terms of this. We're going to go off into, yeah. you know, someplace out there past Jupiter, a few light years, and there'll be a place there. And then we'll shake hands with God and we'll sit down and be with Him forever. Now, you're already with Him. Yes. You're already one with Him. Mm -hmm. The difference is when we transfer or translate from this, from this physical body to being totally spirit, we are aware yeah. that right. we and God are one all the time. God's a spirit. He's invisible. You're not going to see God. Not even then. Amen? Right. You will just know. No. You will be totally in tune yes. and connected Everything. with God, yes. no matter where you are. And we get a glorified body. The reason for the glorified body is it doesn't dampen the awareness of our oneness with God. Right. This one does. Because sure. it's too sense-oriented. Right. The other one activates by the Spirit. Right. It operates by the Spirit. It doesn't have the limitations this one has. Jesus moved through walls. You know? yeah. I mean, he just was here and then he's somewhere else. Yeah. That's the body we get. It's just like our spirit. Totally in tune with God. Totally aware of God. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. That'll be good. <laughs> That'll be good. How many of you know in his presence is fullness of joy? Yes. That's heaven. You'll just have joy forever. Because you're totally aware of being in his presence all the time. Not just when you get a miracle. Right? I mean, not just when you get a healing or get a deliverance. Here, that, then that's when we shout, right? But the truth is, we have it all the time. And it's our ability, by being in Christ, to manifest that the same way Jesus did. Amen? We don't have to wait to die. It's all right. We don't have to be afraid of that because we're not going to die anyway. But I'm just saying, we can have heaven here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Praise the Lord. i got to quit. Praise God. God bless you. Be who you are, okay? Quit, yeah. quit being a hypocrite. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that to, you know, negative. I'm saying, right. you are yeah. there. You're already there. Don't quit struggling. Just be it. Yeah. And watch, I promise you, watch what God does. Watch the doors He opens. When you quit struggling to be and just recognize you've arrived, you'll start to see things happening that were happening all along. You just didn't see them because you didn't make it happen. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you didn't recognize it when it did happen. Yeah. God puts us in places and with people and in situations and circumstances all the time to bless us so that we can be a blessing. Uh -huh. Yeah. He'll, he'll take care of you yes, yes. in a way that you can never take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I quit. I'm stopping. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week.